Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. And today we have another set of crazy stories for you. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Let's get started. Occasionally, I get to be the hero. Today was that day. Time for another long and rambling story. Like most of you, we're ramping up for the holiday season. Black Friday is a week away. Today, I'm training new team members, coaching existing team members, helping in another department that was shorthanded, organizing, fixing, and basically pulling whatever hair I have left out as we prepare for the coming holiday rush. And in the middle of the maelstrom, a tale that could have ended badly, but tooting my own horn here a bit, it didn't. It's my story, and in my mind's eye, I get to be awesome in it. So let's just run with that. My customer service cashier called me to the front from where I was helping in another department. I walk up to see a very unhappy woman holding a shoebox looking at me expectantly. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? I asked. The unhappy woman replied, I'm here to pick up a pair of shoes that were FedExed here from store in neighboring state. Now, this is unusual. We don't usually ship products store to store via FedEx. So immediately I knew something was up. I checked up front, and I didn't have any shoes on hold, called the back, and no one knew anything about them, called the MOD, and she was aware we'd ordered them but didn't know if they'd arrived or not. As I was checking around, I was also talking with the unhappy lady and got her side of the story. I tried to order four items from your website two weeks ago, and the order wouldn't go through. The website said to call your 800 number, so I did. I told the person I talked to exactly what I wanted, and she confirmed the size and colors back to me before I paid her, she explained. She went on, getting visibly agitated but remaining calm. My order came in three shipments. Two items were the wrong color, one was the wrong size, and these shoes, she gestured to the box she was holding, are two different sizes. I took the shoe box and looked inside. Sure enough, one was a size five, the other was a five and a half. Unhappy lady continued. I called the number back and no one would help me. One person even said it was my fault. I'll keep the wrong colors, but my daughter really wants these shoes. Team lead name ordered a new pair for me last week. I got a tracking number. They should have taken three days to get here. Nobody called me, but they should be here by now. While she was explaining all this to me, fellow team members were looking all over for the shoes. They looked in the back, in the office, in receiving, even tore through the entire shoe department looking for the elusive shoes. Another was digging through the tracking numbers in our account, trying to find when the shoes had shipped and if we'd received them, and we weren't finding squat. Ma'am, I do apologize, but it appears we may not have received your shoes yet, I began. Unhappy lady interrupted me. They are here. I know they are. FedEx doesn't take that long. I want my shoes, and I'm not driving down here again. I understand, I started, only to get interrupted again. No, you don't understand. I've now talked with six different people at your company between the phone and coming here. Nobody has taken responsibility, and no one has fixed this. At this point, a few things were going through my mind. Usually, our website orders go very well. Unfortunately, not this time. But I set that aside for now, as talking about it won't appease this customer, nor help me find her shoes. I also thought about a customer service class I took many years ago at a different company. One of the key takeaways was to get on the customer's side along with ways to achieve that. My final thought is a sort of personal motto of mine. I try very hard to always treat people better than they expect to be treated, both at work and in my personal life. I don't always succeed, but I try. With these things in mind, I began, ma'am, if I were you... I'd be furious. This is not how my company taught me to treat our customers, and clearly we failed you. I'm so sorry this happened. I'm going to do my best to make this as right for you as I can. With that, she calmed back down a little, still unhappy and understandably so, as she reiterated, I just want my shoes. I'm not leaving until I get them. We didn't have them. No nearby store has them. I can't get this lady her shoes right now. Ma'am, unfortunately, I don't have them here. What can I do to begin to make this right? She restated, I just want my shoes, and she stared at me. Her face was devoid of expression, but I could see the anger in her eyes. I know that look. I make that same look when I'm PO'd. 
Not that they forgot to put pickles on my burger PO'd, but really PO'd. My ex used my toothbrush to clean the toilet and stole my dog PO'd. Mentally, I ran through my available options as she stared at me. I'm happy to refund your money on the mismatched pair and I'll keep investigating and find your daughter's shoes, or if there's another option you'd prefer, I'll do my best, I temporized. She thought for a moment, then agreed to let me refund her money, but reiterated her daughter really wants these shoes. I took her name and number as my customer service cashier processed the refund and gave her some of our customer inconvenience coupons we keep on hand. I know these don't begin to make things right, but please take them as my promise I'll find your daughter's shoes, I said, apologizing again. If you weren't the only store that stocked these shoes, I'd never want to deal with your company again. But my daughter really wants them, and I'm going to make her happy. Show me your company isn't as terrible as I think they are right now. With that, she left, still unhappy, and I don't blame her. At this point, we had several team leads and managers involved in trying to figure out what happened at the store level. These shoes are ghosts. Nowhere to be found. The soft lines manager and I conceded defeat. After a short discussion, we agreed the best course of action was to order the shoes from the warehouse for the customer and have them overnighted directly to her, free of charge. I doubt that'll salvage the relationship with the customer at this point, but it was the right thing to do. So we did. As we were placing the order, I called the unhappy woman to confirm her shipping address. Miss unhappy customer, this is Ragbagger from store. I was unable to locate your daughter's shoes in our store, so here's what we're going to do. At no charge to you, we've ordered another pair from the warehouse. I'm having them overnighted to your house. As I spoke, I could tense the tension leaving the phone conversation. Ragbagger, you were the only one through this whole ordeal that even acted like you cared. My daughter really, really wants these shoes, and you're the only one that helped. Thank you, she said. Now, that's not exactly true. I did have a whole team helping me. I was just the point of contact. I asked her about her daughter. Turns out I have a child around the same age, so we connected a bit as parents before I wrapped up the call. Ma'am, I know if I were in your position, I would be just as upset, if not more. All I've tried to do is treat you the way I would want to be treated if the situation was reversed. Again, I'm sorry this happened. I'm sorry we as a company handled this so poorly and I hope we've begun to make up for it in some small way. Unhappy lady asked me what the best way to contact corporate was, and I gave her a couple of options. She wants to let them know about her whole unsatisfactory experience, but she also asked for my full name because she wanted to let them know about me too. So lost slash when there, I suppose. But today I got to be the hero, assuming nothing else goes wrong, and that feels pretty good. Another small bonus for me, the soft lines manager listened in on the phone call, and after I hung up, she said, holy crap, ragbagger, you can be nice to people. I just smirked. Hopefully today makes up for the customer that told my supervisor I'm a Richard not too long ago, but that's a story for another time, where I was the villain, not the hero. Not the hero your store deserves, the hero your store needs. And our next story. It's just some damn corn. I remembered this story last night during dinner, eating corn oddly enough. To preface this story, I've been working retail for a little over two years now, and this story comes from the first couple of months of my retail career. It was a Monday night at the grocery store, so it was pretty slow as it normally was. It was only myself and one other guy closing that night. I was out filling and breaking down the last few spots while my coworker was in the back washing the mountain of trays that were left out. About 10 minutes to closing, I was refilling the corn bin so the morning crew didn't have to do it. As I was filling the corn, a customer walked up who will be known as Old B-Word, or OB for short. Other characters include me, CW for co-worker, and NOL for nice old lady. As I'm putting the corn out, OB is looking through the mesh bag to find her corn as to not reach across me to get her corn. No problem. After about 30 seconds, she asks, this corn's a bit bad. Could you get me some more? Me. Oh, of course. Let me run to the back real quick. I hurry into the back, put the bad corn down, and picked up a new bag of corn. Tossing onto a flat cart, I head back out. On my way out, my coworker asked me why I have another bag. I explain the situation and head out. Leaving the back room, I find NOL waiting with OB. I cut open the bag and go back to putting this newer corn out as the two old ladies sift through the bag. 
Another 30 seconds pass, and I hear OB speak one more time. This corn is crap. Get me some more. Not a question, not a polite request. This was a command, like a king talking down to his servant. Annoyed, I bring the corn into the back once again. As I'm passing my coworker, he stops me. Didn't you just bring a bag out for a customer? Yep, but this F and B word isn't happy with it. Quick side note, I was a bit pissy because it had been a long day and this whole corn debacle was slowing me down on the road to leaving early. Returning to the store floor, I see that OB is nowhere in sight. I roll my eyes and head over to the bin to put this corn down. Thankfully, NOL was still there, waiting for the corn. I cut the bag open and start piling it into the bins. I hear NOL rummaging through it, and to my joy, I hear the plastic corn bag being filled with corn. NOL finishes up and turns to me. Thank you so much for bringing this out. I truly appreciate it. Oh, no problem, ma'am. Just doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, I don't know what the other woman's deal was. It's just some damn corn. Thank you so much for saying that, because I was thinking the same thing. We shared a laugh, and she left. Now, at this point, it's 8.55, so we've got another five minutes until the store closes. The entire time I'm putting the corn out, I'm praying OB doesn't come back. I told myself if she asked for me, she would be SOL, as I wasn't about to go get another effing bag. Lo and behold, guess who comes back to check the corn? OB. Is this the new corn? Yep. OB goes through the bag, and thank God she started putting corn into a bag to purchase. She fills her bag and walks away. Not a single thank you or have a good night, just to turn and leave. But as she's walking away, I hear her mutter under her breath, Well, that was better. Yeah, F you too, sweetheart. Thankfully, I haven't seen her since. She's probably off terrorizing some other poor retail employee over some product that isn't good enough. He waited in line for this ridiculous flex. I'm an author on a book tour. I'm in a big chain bookstore sitting at a table with a stack of my books in front of me and beside a seven foot tall reproduction of my book cover, I'm chatting with someone while signing their book. There are three people in line behind them. It's my first book, so three people in line is huge for me. I'm enjoying the hell out of it and I'm working my hardest to make sure everyone's having a great time. And mostly they are. Mostly. I start to pick up an impatient vibe from a man at the end of the line. He's kind of huffy, looking around a lot, and keeps trying to make eye contact with me as I'm writing a somewhat lengthy dedication for the person at the front. The front person asks if we can take a photo together. I say, of course, because I'm so not used to anyone wanting to take a picture with me, and I'm totally an attention hog. This really sets grumpy man off. Really? He barks. I'm trying my best not to be mad at Grumpy Man because he's in line to buy my book. Maybe he had an awful day, or maybe he's late for dinner, or maybe his parking meter ran out five minutes ago and he has so many parking tickets they're going to tow his car. Who knows? So I ask the other people in line if it's okay for this gentleman to jump ahead since he seems to be pressed for time, and everybody's cool with it. So I motion for him to come on up. He plops a bag down on the signing table, pulls out three copies of Getty Lee's Big Book of Bass, and says, I need to return these. Oh. Oh, no. I put on my best apologetic smile. I'm so sorry for the confusion, I say, gesturing at my stack of books in the giant sign besides me. I'm the author of this book, and I'm here to sign copies of it today. Do I look like I care? I need to return these, he shouts. For sure, I get that, I say, but I don't know how I can help you. I don't work here. I'm just visiting this store to sign my book. I point towards the cash desk about 20 feet away and say, I'm sure that the awesome people who work at this store would be happy to help you. I stood in this line. You need to help me, he snaps. I'm pretty convinced that he's not listening to me. I'm so sorry about that confusion. It makes sense. There was a line of people. You figured it was a line for cash, so you stood in it. But it turns out it was a line to get my autograph. The good news is there's no line at the cash register, and I pointed towards the actual cash register. The other people in line are having a great time watching this show, and a few people have come creeping over from the coffee shop attached to the bookstore to get a better view. Cut out this author bullcrap, shouts Grumpy Man, and get me your manager. 
I stand up very slowly. I pick up a copy of my book from the stack and flip to the About the Author page. I hold it up beside my face and make the same smirking grin that I'm wearing in the headshot printed in my book. This visual aid seems to have worked because Grumpy Man grabbed his three copies of Getty Lee's Big Book of Bass and Toddler stomped his way over to the actual cash register. Hey, thank you guys for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.